Hello everybody and it's Freddy and I'm back on the desktop with something a little bit different again. This week I would like to present this, the Dark Sun campaign setting for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Dark Sun came out in 1991, this is the expanded and revised uh, version of it which came out in 1995. Um, Dark Sun's a little different but let's open the box first of all. Inside we have an interesting piece of cloth and lots of books. Now this is a thick chunky box but look how full it is. We've got the Age of Heroes, Rules for Conquering the Savage Lands, Where the Psionicist, Mystery of the Ancients, The Wanderer's Chronicle. We've got a rather lovely Games Master screen with interesting uh, tables across the inside and a fairly nice painting. It's not one of the best I've ever seen but that does its job. It's quite nice. We've also got a couple of more traditional printed maps which are of specific regions on the cloth map. Anything else? A piece of paper of advertising. If I just put all these to the side for a moment. Let's have a look at this piece of cloth. I don't know why I closed that box. I'll need it open again in a second. And we've got this lovely cloth map of the Dark Sun world. Now, Dark Sun differs from most Dungeons and Dragons worlds. Um, it's a post-apocalyptic world is probably the best way I can describe it. Um, wizards have gone to war and destroyed the world. And the Dark Sun world is set in the world afterwards. They've managed to seal the world off from gods, so paladins and clerics don't exist anymore. And there's no divine magic. The wizards themselves, as well as wrecking the planet, there's only two types of wizards left. Uh, defilers and preservers. Preservers kind of gather their magic subtly from the world, whereas defilers just drain the magic. So planet, uh, plants uh, wither and die. Insects will drop out of the air around them as they just suck all the life force in in magic and cast their spells. Um, so much of the world, as you can see from the map, is desert. Um, the other side effect of all this magical fallout when the spells were cast is that the races are very, very different. Um, everybody has psionic powers. That's one of the big differences in Dark Sun. Um, they generally just get one sort of mutant healing power, which um, when I played, I was playing a ranger who randomly rolled uh, healing hands. So he basically could do a paladin's lay on hands. So I had him insane and believing himself to be a paladin. But the other thing about the game is... The races you can play are very, very different. You've got the traditional humans, who aren't much different at all. You've got dwarves, who don't live underground anymore, um, tend to shave themselves because it's too hot in the desert to have a big lustrous beard. So they're wee baldy dwarves. You've got the elves, who tend to um, constantly be moving. They live in the deserts, and they're like desert runners. You've got the halflings, who still have the halfling trait of wanting to eat a lot, but now they'll eat anybody who comes near them. Um, although I'm loath to call it cannibalism, because they don't tend to eat each other. They'll eat humans, they'll eat elves, they'll eat dwarfs. And then you've got other species as well. Um, remembering this is second edition Dungeons and Dragons, so the um, newer species didn't yet exist. But, if I can find... Player character races, Aracocra, which are these weird vulture people. We've got the dwarves, we've got the elves, we've got the half elves, very similar. Half giants. You can actually play half giants in the game. Uh, characters with strengths, starting strengths up to 20, which, given the original second edition Dungeon Dragons, you had the a uh, random roll which could get you up to 18 if you rolled very well. A half giant can get 20 strength. 
We've got the halflings, as I mentioned. We've got humans. We've got uh, mules. Or mulls. We call them mules in my group. And they are half dwarfs, human dwarfs. Um, tend to be as tall as a human, but as muscled as a dwarf. So quite uh, stocky, muscular people. Paterans, which are these weird uh, people. And Thrycreen, which are the um, mantis men. Um, all of which have their places in this world. I played the sort of non-revised version, so we didn't really have the Aracocra or the Paterans, but in our original party we had Elves, we had a Mule, we had Thrycreen, we had a Half-Giant, who amusingly failed to hold up a door and got his head crushed in an um, event which we all remembered. For many years. Um, as well as your standard classes, you've got fighter, you've got gladiator, you've got ranger. Wizard classes, defiler, preserver. Priests still exist. You've got clerics, druids. But clerics obviously can't follow gods. They follow the um, natural spheres. We've got rogues who are bards, thieves, traders. And we've got Sionicists, and that should be it. Yep. And it's an interesting world. It's a bit it's post-apocalyptic. And the other thing about the world, as well as um, all the changes to the species, is metal is incredibly, incredibly rare. So nobody wanders around in plate mail, because that would be worth millions. Nobody carries gold pieces. Um, they're all uh, ceramic pieces. And instead of having coppers, you have bits, because the ceramics are scored across, so you can snap them in half and hand just part of a, a ceramic piece. Um, people tend to use bone swords or obsidian. Uh, and your weapons tend to wear out, because they're not metal. Um, leather armor still exists, but you've got heat disadvantage. If you're in the desert, you'll overheat. Um, it's a very interesting look at the game. It tends to be a bit super-powered. I remember in the early one, I think it was third or fifth level you tended to start at, because it's supposed to be such a tough world that nobody would survive normally. Um, if I we flip through... Now, there's lots of background in here. Animals and dehydration... Um, Athesian Undead. We've got the Way of the Sionicist here with their psychic weapons and their abilities. A uh, cut down version of the complete book of uh, Sionicists, was it? Or Psychics? Mystery of the Ancients. We have a starting adventure, a couple of handouts. Wanderer's Chronicle, which will be some background on the world. Yep, detailing everything. Will this show us the races a bit more? No, it's still the half-giant compared to a human. Um, I have no idea what that is. He doesn't look friendly. The Silt Sea. So, where this looks like it's... An ocean, it's not. It's actually silt. It's dry stones and all that that ships can sail on, but obviously no water. Uh, monsters kind of live below. There are these giant fortresses which travel across the desert because there are far less uh, places for people to live. And what we found when we played in it, it was very much a world of dredging over what remains. Let's have a look at one of these maps. Now, I've heard rumours that they're going to redo Dark Sun for 5th edition, which I think is a very good idea. It's one of the most interesting campaign settings. 
It's very, very different to your Greyhawk, your Forgotten Realms, even your Dragonlance, which tends to be a bit more high fantasy and magic. Um, this is fairly brutal. You know, ending up in the forests and getting eaten by cannibal halflings. Um, giants stalking the wastes. That was the big one we noticed, that there don't seem to be as many dragons, but giants are a real uh, problem as they wander the wastes. But anyway, that, or rather this, is Dark Sun campaign setting, released in 1995, trying something a bit different, perhaps a bit too super-powered, with everybody having psychic powers and starting off at high level, and many people having stats over the norm. But it's a lot of fun. And that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you very, very much for watching. Like and subscribe, which I never say in my videos, but I really should. I'll catch you later.